all the amateurs are going to have to decide if they want to ride Tiana's or Peter Pan. We're going to have to figure it out. Hey y'all, it's LJ here, owner and founder of Smart Moms Plan Disney and Smart Moms Travel. We are so glad you're here for another episode of the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast. Now, here's your host, Allie. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast. I am your host, Allie. Today, I am joined by Katie and Carla. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, how's it going? It's going so great. I am really excited about this episode because we're going to be talking about something so different than we usually get the chance to talk about. And we're going to be giving a little bit of a behind the curtain perspective on something really exciting with the new attraction that is just about to open as we're releasing this episode. But some of us here on the episode today have already ridden it. Before we dig in, though, I am leaving, as we're recording this, for the parks a week from yesterday. So I'm about to go on my first summer Disney trip in actually two years. I didn't go to Disney last summer, and I have a little bit of a, like, scarring memory of when I had my kids there last time because they were really little, and I don't know, I maybe could have been more prepared, but... I mean, obviously you've ridden this ride, so you've done summer in the park, not only every year, but already this year. It's not so bad. Yeah, Florida's hot. You can expect Florida to be hot. (laughs) But I feel like Disney gives you a lot of opportunities to cool off, whether that be places to go sit in the AC or to maybe catch a splash here and there, right? (laughs) Yeah, Carla, do you guys go to the parks a lot? I mean, you get to go all year. So I was actually a little bit curious as we were set to record this. Do you avoid the heat of the summer because you can go anytime? Or do you all find that you go in the summer when your kids are out of school more? Yeah, I do. I avoid going in the summertime. I can go in the fall. I love a cool day at Disney. Everybody knows this about me. I just went last Friday for, or actually last Thursday for the annual pass holder preview for Tiana's. And I was dripping by the end of the day. I mean, we did six hours in the park. And by the end of it, I look like Katie's daughter from that story I told in one of the previous episodes. Like my (laughs) face was on the floor, melted. It's so funny because I obviously don't live in Florida. So I don't deal with that extreme heat. But this week, it is going to be like 98 here. It's going to be very hot. And I actually just dropped my oldest daughter off at summer camp. She is going for a five night sleepaway camp, which is not her first time. So I'm not super nervous or anything, but it is going to be the hottest week. And I was thinking she's going to do a week at sleepaway camp. It's going to be 98 degrees. And then we're literally, we're leaving almost immediately when she's finished for Disney, where we're going to be in the parks and that heat. And so she's going to have, you know, a very intense couple of weeks. And my little ones are actually doing the camp as well, but they only stay one night. So they'll be playing games and hanging at camp in that same heat that y'all experience. Uh, I love a cute Disney outfit as, as do you, Allie and your kids. I looked straight ratchet last Friday. (laughs) I was wearing like oversized t-shirt leggings. I don't know why I wore leggings. I had a cooling rag that completely soaked my shirt and I didn't care. I was wearing like maybe mascara. I don't know. I looked horrific. You're so funny. (laughs) I've been getting my stuff kind of together a little earlier than I normally would because uh, this is also doubling as a dance event for my dance studio. So I I have have a lot of rehearsals and things I have to take care of this week. And so I've been starting to get some of my packing things together. And I am like avoiding all of my t-shirts. I'm trying to find like the thinnest piece of fabric that's going to cover the things (laughs) needs to cover. And then that's what I'm bringing to the parks. And I'm like, I'll dress it up like with an earring and call myself mini before I'm going to wear a t-shirt that's thick or baggy at all. It's rough. Yeah. So I did not make it down for, well, I don't have an annual pass, which is hilarious. And we talk about often, but even still, I don't think I would have made it to Florida for the pass holder review of this, but the two of you did. And I think anytime that we get to talk about something new at Disney, it's really special because it takes a really long time for Disney to have something exciting and new because from the time that they announce it and get the permits and go through the Imagineering phase and close down and, you know, whatever it's replacing and put up the walls. And, you know, it's a year and a half to two plus years before you actually get that new thing. So Mm -hmm. we've been hearing about Tiana's Bayou for, gosh, at least since 2022, but maybe even before that. 
And here we are, middle 2024. The three of us, I don't know if you all remember this, but we were actually at Disney World the day after original Splash Mountain closed. And we almost changed our trip to like head and, and ride it on that last day. We did not make it. So we were in the parks. We were at Magic Kingdom the day after Splash Mountain had closed. And it, I, I feel like this year and a half has flown by, honestly. Um, I was say, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. It really doesn't. But that was in January of 2023. So it's been a while that this has been in development. But I do feel like it kind of came together pretty quickly. I feel like for me, the marker of time has been... Like we rode it, not the day that it closed, but that same week we went to go ride Splash Mountain before it closed. And my middle daughter, Emma, was just tall enough to ride. And I was like, oh my gosh, Matt, she's just barely tall enough to have a Splash Mountain experience. And then she did. She rode it one time. She loved it. My oldest daughter, Bella, loved it too. And they, oh, they've been asking and asking and asking, when is the Tiana's ride open? opening and then we went this week for the pass holder preview and tally was tall enough to ride i was like oh my gosh whenever we left off emma was just big enough and now here's tally and she's big enough to ride too so it was cool being able to experience that with the whole family (laughs) yeah that's that's really awesome so we've done one ride preview on the show before and i'm excited to dig in because this is more than just a ride review this is almost an experience review there's a lot going on in that area So for those of you that maybe aren't familiar, your first time Disney goer, the old Splash Mountain is now Tiana's Bayou Adventure. It's just now set to open. And that is going to be over in Frontierland. So when you walk into the park, it's sort of center left. (laughs) That first immediate left is going to be Adventureland and it's more central left. And it's all the way to the edge of the park. And they have really started to develop that whole area into a New Orleans Tiana experience. How does it feel different over there? Because honestly, it's been dead for a year and a half. You know, we we only walk over there to ride Big Thunder and then we're out. There's nothing going on. And now I feel like there's this whole new life. So tell me when you all walk in. Wait, 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 wait. You're not taking the boat to go to Tom Sawyer Island over there? (laughs) I have never done that. I've never done it. Not going to do it. Maybe this summer. Maybe this summer. We'll see. I doubt it. (laughs) I (laughs) have to say, I've never done Tom Sawyer Island either. And... I am, like, every time we go, I'm like, let's do something we haven't done before. I still haven't done Tom Sawyer Island. <laughs> Last time we did the Frontierland shootout, because that's closing here soon, too. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, that's closing. Um, probably with good reason. I will be at Magic Kingdom with 50 of my dancers. I don't know that we'll all get on a boat and go over to Tom Sawyer Island, but I have <laughs> a feeling that if it's something they want to do, like, that might be just enough to get me over there. But I'm not... I'm not, I don't know. Probably not. So we're counting on 50 teenagers to say, yes, we have to do Tom Sawyer Island. Exactly. exactly. You guys aren't going. <laughs> so tell me about, tell me about what it's like over there now. What's the atmosphere feel like? What's different? I feel like Frontierland has always had this Western type vibe out there, mm-hmm. but they're maybe shifting what the Frontierland atmosphere is a little bit, or maybe I'm wrong. Tell me what it feels like. It definitely has this going down the bayou feel (laughs) right like they really pressed into the theming there a lot and i love it i don't feel like it's a stark contrast or a breakaway from frontierland it feels like it fits there but it definitely feels unique in the land and i would say what caught my attention most as you are walking in like as you get into the queue the buildings are so colorful and they have these ornamental glass bottles and things hanging everywhere that are like all different colors. Like it's very vibrant. It's a very friendly and inviting space. Not only that, but the entrance has, has moved from where you would originally enter Splash Mountain. It's moved and you essentially go under this awning. And once you go underneath it, you are just hit, like Katie said, with the sights, with the sounds Mm-hmm. The music's piping in. You hear that, you know, jazz music. Um, much of the queue is outside, where I feel like less of the queue in Splash Mountain was outside, right? It's definitely a significant queue that is outdoors, and it's semi-shaded. So just keep that in mind when you do go. You might want to have an umbrella or a fan, I don't know, something, because it can get kind of hot out there. But Katie is right. It is a happy place. It is 
vibrant. It is colorful. There are parts of the queue outside that are leading you into the story that is about to be told on the ride. Mm -hmm. So if any listeners do not like spoilers or, you know, maybe you're the person that doesn't watch the ride through videos ahead of time. I actually am that person, you know, but I'm going to give up some of that for the sake of today, you know, make sure you are aware that this is going to be a bit spoiler heavy. So the story told in Tiana's Bayou Adventure. It's the Bayou Adventure. It's not the story of Princess and the Frog, which I think a lot of listeners, I know I expected that. Katie just told me that that is not what's happening. So it is all a, a brand new tale, right? Yeah. So the storyline that we're in right now takes place after the film. So there's not a lot of tie over to things that happened inside the film. <laughs> um, it's more of let's build that story out after the fact. As you're walking through the queue, you'll see Easter eggs of like the recipe for the beignets, the recipe for dad's gumbo, right? What I loved, and my husband Matthew pointed this out to me because he and I have talked a lot, what happened to Tiana's dad? in the movie we always this is like a game my husband and i play is what what's more of the story that could have happened there and at one point you're in the queue and there's this wall that's sort of dedicated to her dad and it shows pictures of him in the service and everything during i think it takes place like world war one around there it takes place around that time in american history and there's a uh, newspaper clippings like everywhere. You're going through the queue and at one point you see that her dad has been awarded the Distinguished Service Cross after his passing. That's like awarded to soldiers for extraordinary acts of heroism. So I love that they they sort of tell a little bit more about what happened to her dad there and the kind of person her dad was. And we know in the movie how much that shaped her and her work ethic and how much she wanted to press in with people but it was, I don't know, it was just really cool seeing how there are Easter eggs to help you build out the story there. I'm I'm here for the lore, right? <laughs> I think one of the, the biggest things is when you enter into your first building, you come up on this like table setting and on the table is a newspaper article that says it basically gives you your first clue as to what is happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is Tiana throwing a Mardi Gras party. Yep. That, that is your first big clue about what this ride is going to be about. And then later you start to figure out that she's throwing a Mardi Gras party and she needs a band. So that is essentially the ride that you're about to take. I love that little behind the scenes nugget because I think Imagineering probably works so hard. Like I can imagine the round table discussion of, okay, you know, they walk in, they see this newspaper clipping and we're, we're setting the scene from entry to exit to drop, you know? And I, I don't know that a lot of listeners even realize that most Disney attractions have that going on. You know, the queue is never just a line. It is a setup and it is important. And it's probably very important in this case, you know, because we've talked before about how in Frontierland, you don't have like a pre-show scenario like Guardians or anything like that. You're mm -hmm. learning your story as you're walking through. And so that's that's awesome to know. A little bit more about the ride before we get into some details. Height requirement, 40 inches. Is that what Splash Mountain was? I think it was because my yeah. youngest are now 44 inches and able to ride Space Mountain and they could ride Splash Mountain before it closed. So I think the height requirement has stayed the same. How long was the attraction? Is it the same track? Is it the same sort of setup? Is it longer, shorter? What is it in comparison? It's a 12 minute ride. I don't believe they changed any parts of the track, but I have to say as someone who loved Splash Mountain before it closed, so much of the ride has changed that it's going to be hard for you to sort of tell where you're at in the ride. It's not like you'll be sitting in the ride and you'll be like, oh yeah, this is the part of Splash Mountain where yada, yada, yada. Like, I don't feel like that that happened at all for me oh, throughout the ride. Did you feel like that, Carla? What I remember about Splash Mountain is I love all the little drops. I feel like on normal flume rides, you have one massive drop. In here, you have multiple drops. I never liked Splash Mountain for the story that it was told. I liked it for the actual ride track. And the ride track here is the same. What happened 
in Splash Mountain versus what happens in Tiana's. I have no idea, but I was just laughing and giggling the whole time. It's still the laughing place. There's there's part of it when you actually drop in the dark. And then if you remember on Splash Mountain, then it does this like little dip up and then dip back down. It's so fun. It is so fun. And I I was so excited when they announced this retheming. I really genuinely felt like Magic Kingdom needed more princess. We needed a good princess attraction. It's Magic Kingdom. It's the castle. It's where they live. And this is this is so fitting. I I love that they did it. And I agree with you. I can't wait to ride. I will say you get you don't get princess vibes in this ride, and I'm okay with that because it's a story through the movie. There is a tower that's visible from the outside. You don't have to be in the ride to see the tower, but it has Tiana's foods. So this is kind of like this logo that's everywhere. It's her, I guess, food company. And it has her princess crown on the top. I don't know if you noticed that, Katie, a princess crown. And then it has two little stars, which is Ray and Evangeline, which is, I don't know about you guys. It's like one of my favorite parts of the movie. I was actually, after I rode the ride, everybody was like, how was it? How was it? And I, I knew Katie and Becky were supposed to ride. So I was like, when you ride, can you see if you saw Ray and Evangeline anywhere? And that's because I really went in thinking it was like Princess and the Frog, like we said at the beginning. And I really wanted to see my favorite character. And turns out the storyline is totally different, which is fine. But you do have that little glimpse of them on the tower. You can still hear his voice in the ride. As you're going through the ride, he sings that like going down the bayou song like he does in the film. Yeah, I, I am so glad you said that because Ray is also somebody that I love so much. And so as you guys were saying that this is not a, a retelling, I knew that Ray can't be in a future telling. And so I was a little bit sad, you know, as you were saying that. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, What about the drop? The drop is, this is going to be really spoiler heavy. I almost want to close my ears so I don't hear it. (laughs) I, the drop in Splash Mountain was like a scary moment. And the ride was this buildup of we're at the darkest part and drop back into happiness. In my head, you know, my wife and I have actually been talking about it as though it was going to be a princess and the frog thing. And I said, I've been saying all along, Oh, I bet the shadow man is going to be like on the walls. And before you drop, it's going to be that moment. And I bet it's going to be that song. And now that I know it's not a retelling is that moment. I mean, maybe you can answer it without giving too much away. Is it similar to old Splash Mountain or is that a totally reimagining of what the drop signifies in the story? Now that you have pointed that out, I'm kind of questioning myself if they did change like portions of the actual architecture of the ride, because I remember that was a really dark uphill incline to get to that 50 foot drop. And it's not dark anymore. (laughs) Well, it's not dark subject wise. Like there's no conflict. There's no villain. There's no reason really why you're going up this giant dark tube and then getting ready to take a huge plunge. It doesn't have that conflict that Splash Mountain had, but it is dark. They put these crazy lights and then fog. So it's definitely, I don't remember splash mountain having fog and lights like it does it does now but yeah i mean it's definitely dark going up and then you you come to the top and then it has that beautiful view of the castle if you guys can take your like if you want to risk it (laughs) take your cameras out because one of the best pictures in the park is up there Mm -hmm. i I was dying laughing because Mama Odie is a very prominent character all throughout the ride. And to sort of speak a little more on what you were talking about, Carla, where the cool thing about Splash Mountain is there are several dips throughout it. She like trolls you throughout the ride, which is kind of hilarious. You're about to go down a little dip and Mama Odie's there and she says, y'all ready to go down the 50? And then it's just a short drop. And I was like, I can't believe this is happening right now. Oh my gosh, she's hilarious. And she's there through a lot of the areas where you're about to have a drop. And so it was, it was really funny to me. But towards the end of the ride, after you've done the big drop, she has another like animatronic there at the end. And she's, she's by a plate of beignets and she's like talking to you as you're exiting the ride they pipe the scent of freshly baked beignets into the ride and i was like this is the best place to be stuck on a ride ever 
And they're going to be bringing beignets into the park. Currently, you can only get beignets at Fort Orleans French Quarter. And they're Mickey shaped. They are bringing Tiana's beignets into the park as not a limited time thing, right? Like they're coming to the park as a celebration of part of this new area. Yeah, they're going to be at the outpost, which is it's close to the ride, but like not close to the ride. I personally would have thought they would have had some sort of quick service or somewhere a little closer where it felt like you can get off the ride and go buy beignets right outside type thing. Yeah, I would have loved like a quick service, like they have at Disneyland. Like a rice and beans gumbo. Yeah, exactly. That would have been awesome. Yeah, maybe that'll come in the future. I don't know. I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity in this area, you know, when you're developing something so big and new. Mm -hmm. So as we're talking about this and, and putting this episode out there, the ride is still not open. It's about to open, which is really exciting. And you both wrote it on an annual pass holders preview, as you said. When it's time for our listeners and people visiting Disney World to ride this ride, that's going to look a little different, I think, than we expected. The pattern that Disney has been following for all of its new attractions recently is you can get a virtual queue or you can purchase an individual lightning lane and there is no standby queue. This will be a little different. Yeah. So Genie Plus lightning lane selection is going to be your option as well as the virtual queue opening at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. You do have to be in the park at 1 p.m. to get the virtual queue for it. But again, this is going to be a regular Genie Plus lightning lane meaning you don't have to pay extra. You have to pay for Genie, but you don't have to pay extra just to ride this ride, which is, to me, that is fantastic. Yeah, that's huge. So I was very pleasantly surprised by this. I mean, I'm glad to hear that Tiana's is not going to be an individual Lightning Lane attraction. However, I don't know. Tron just doesn't get the hype that they thought it would get. I kind of feel like Disney's <laughs> Disney doesn't quite gotten that right they should have dropped tron and picked up tiana's but you know i'm okay with that that's fine it works out in my favor <laughs> yeah it definitely I does. actually yeah i think part of the pass holder preview was them testing out the double virtual queue and i think with the pass holder preview the pass holder could actually get both that i don't believe that that will be the case when the ride opens i think that you will have to pick between Tron and Splash Mountain. Tiana's bio. Between Tiana's bio. Yeah. we. I guess we don't know that for sure, but we're going to find out. And I, I think you're probably right on that. I, it's going to be interesting because I bet that that Lightning Lane selection just in the normal Genie Plus is going to go really quickly. Oh, yeah. Like we see a lot of attractions go really fast, but I almost worry that when you're doing that virtual queue, like the Genie Plus Lightning Lane will be gone. It, it's almost, I wonder if it's going to feel like a one or the other type thing because I just see both going just so fast. Yeah, I think you have a point there. I mean, for as, as much as Tron isn't, I guess, hitting a home run the way that Guardians did, it still does fill up every day and within moments. Yeah, that's interesting. All the amateurs are going to have to decide if they want to ride Tiana's or Peter Pan. Yeah. They're going to have to figure it out to, before they make their first selection. Yeah, I think Peter Pan is going to drop from the most popular lightning lane. Finally. Oh my gosh. Why? Why is it the most popular lightning lane? I know we've talked about this on previous episodes, but I will never understand that. One of my lightning lanes fell off this this weekend while we were at the annual pass holder preview. We had it for Space Mountain and it went down. So then it changes to a multiple experiences pass that you can use pretty much anywhere. And so I was like, oh, okay, we'll go use this at Peter Pan. Oh my gosh. We go over to Peter Pan and they're like, oh, this can't be used here. This is one of the five attractions that you can't use it at. And I'm like, oh this God. is Peter Pan. What are you talking about? <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, it's insane. So mostly good reviews. I think a lot of people really love this. I think Disney did a great job. I think I can't wait to ride it. I'm going to go in with a really optimistic outlook. I think it's going to be awesome. I'm so, I'm grateful that this is there, but it hasn't been totally smooth. The ride has already like broken down a couple of times, hasn't it? Yeah. The day that my pass holder preview was the ride did not open till almost 1150 that day. So I was the first, I was, it was the first day of the, the preview. And of course, media and, you know, cast members have all ridden it previously and yeah 11 50 and I heard that it broke down again that night somewhere in the five o'clock hours so definitely glitchy I'm assuming it's 
animatronics or music not playing properly. Who knows what it is, but definitely seems like they they've got some kinks to work out. I wonder if it has less to do with like glitches in the ride and more to do with weather because that's kind of the downfall of this ride opening as a summer attraction is it's going to be shut down whenever it rains. And so now that we're heading into kind of rainy season here in Florida, it means that that's, that ride's going to be down more often than we would like it to be. And I think anything that is mechanical or, you know, anything like that, what Carlo was saying I'd imagine that that's part of the point of the preview is to get people on the attraction, get early feedback, figure all of that out. But the other part is probably when it opens to the general public and it's flooded with guests, having some of those scenarios worked out. So even though it has had a couple of early issues, I do expect that it'll be smoother and better once this does actually open. Mm-hmm. When you has, when you were saying that Tiana's recipes for her beignets and gumbo were laid out in the queue. I was like, I wonder if you could take a picture and try to make it at home. Like, could you take a picture? Oh, I have the picture. I can send it to you and you can try. Yeah. Actually, my friend, my one of my really close friends from New Orleans is staying with me this week. And we were at dinner last night and he literally said to me, do you want me to make gumbo while I'm here? And I was like, yes, it's like my favorite food ever. So now I'm like, if you send me that picture, I almost want him to make Tiana. So the daddy's gumbo recipe is only in the individual lightning lane. So I didn't get a chance to see it, but I definitely saw some people taking pictures of it. Oh yeah. I'm going to, I think I'm going to give it because I have an authentic Louisiana friend in town. I'm like, I'm going to give it to him and have him make daddy's gumbo while he's here. My daughter Bella is over the moon, and I have to say, we're we're not people that usually partake in gumbo. We're just, I don't know, we don't have that kind of palate. <laughs> but because of the movie, my daughter Bella is like, Mommy, can we have Tiana's gumbo? We have to do this. Like, she is over the moon excited for it. So we're probably going to make it too. I have to check that recipe photo I took from the queue, though, because if it includes shrimp, I'm probably not doing that part. But I would eat gumbo without shrimp. <laughs> it's gumbo. It's gumbo. It has shrimp in it. Spoiler alert. For sure. From Louisiana. Authentic. Daddy put shrimp in his gumbo. I guarantee it. Well, he might have. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what gumbo they're eating up in Pennsylvania, but... Gumbo down here got shrimp in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'm i really excited about this theming. I, I think I'm most thrilled that this is going to be that lightning lane of everything. You know, I, I just think that's such a good call. It's going to be more inclusive for more guests, especially when, you know, people that are visiting with their little ones that want to ride the ride. And for any smart moms travel agents listening today, our hidden Mickey will be Jeannie. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And when I take my trip coming up and by the time this episode is released the ride is still not going to be open so it's going to be actually a little bit before i get on it so i'm, I'm excited to have y'all's perspective and i'm definitely going to go we're over going to get a spoiler soon enough yeah yeah all right well anything else you all want to include or add important for listeners if they're planning on riding it time of day that it might be best any, any other little nuggets of information? I've seen a couple of pictures and videos where they are riding at night and it's all lit up and it does look really cool. So it's kind of like Tron where that, that night factor kicks in and then it just has that really neat factor. It looks really great to ride at night. I think that's interesting because a lot of attractions take place primarily inside, but when you have something that has a queue that's predominantly outside, which you said, and the most important part of the ride is outdoors. I think anytime you have something like that, Tron, you mentioned, has that outdoor part. Then you have that leveled up factor. So Tiana's is great, but Tiana's at night, probably even better. Yeah. I I mean, I personally like it in the middle of the day just because Florida's hot and I, I want to go, you know, get splashed at that time of day. But I feel like a night ride would be great too. The, the only other thing that I was going to say, and just to sort of, you know, encapsulate what this was for my family... We we were heading into the parks and that day my girls were especially rowdy. They were it was it was a time. We were having meltdowns. Matt and I were like not on the same page. It was we were having those not so magical moments at Disney. Okay. And I was like arguing with them as we were going through the queue. I'm like, can you please just behave, please? 
<laughs> right. And it was it was a really trying moment. You you get on the ride and there's the water tower. And I don't think you can see it unless you're on the ride. You can see the back of the water tower. And they have a quote there that says, never ever lose sight of what's really important. And it kind of it hit me in the feels that that right that day. Cause I was like, you know, we're we're at the most magical place on earth. And I'm here with my family and I get to enjoy this. And maybe I should take a step back and really think about what's really important, even though we're having magical meltdowns today. And it did sort of help me to reset my mind. And like my kids were so excited after that. And it did really change their attitude. Maybe they just needed to get a break from the heat for a few minutes. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I think I'm going to say is pro tip, when you're riding Tiana's Bayou Adventure, and you're heading down that five-story drop, remove your hat. <laughs> Brand new hat. Uh, Carla neglected to mention here in this review that she stopped at the Emporium, which is that big shop on Main Street when you walk in Magic Kingdom, bought herself a new hat, took it on. You know, because I don't have 50 other hats, right? But I forgot it. She needed a new one that day, put it on, rode Tiana's, lost the hat. So... <laughs> I told they her, still I said, have I, not found it. <laughs> I said when they do find it, maybe they'll make a shrine to it and say like first ever lost item on Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Like day <laughs> one and somebody has like lost brown item. and <laughs> have swamp water all over it. Well, I'm excited for listeners. I hope this gets you really excited for the new theming and the new story and the new experience that is Tiana's Bayou Adventure. It was long overdue, I think, to overhaul some things in that area. It's going to be really fantastic. I hope that understanding how to ride it, this episode hopefully taught you that. And if you need a little bit more information on how to get a virtual queue or how to get an individual lightning lane, or just a regular genie landing lane like Tiana's Bio Adventure will be, go back and listen to one of our earliest episodes we ever released. Our Navigating Genie Plus Individual Lightning Lanes and Virtual Cues episode has tons of tips that will help you understand exactly how to ride Tiana's Bio Adventure. And of course, find us on all social media at Smart Moms Plan Disney Podcast. And if you're not already part of our Patreon community, be sure to join us there as a Diamond Mind subscriber. You can get special monthly guides that break down specific topics and episodes that we have released. And while we don't have a guide for every episode, I do feel like we have guides that cover some of the most important and detailed topics that you need while you're planning your Disney vacation. That's going to do it for us this time on the Smart Moms Plan Disney Podcast. And until next time, we'll see you real soon.